He's huge, dude. Look how big his back is. First ever Cobra. I've had the privilege of handling. Check that out. Green Mambas. How cool. Woo, little guapo. And it's home day. I think you told me. What if I think you told me? You want to go see how Kevin's doing? Yes! You want to see how Kevin's doing? Let's go! Yes! Kevin is a 14, 15 foot long King Cobra. going on brother hey. i got tyler over here he's helping me out we're making a new baby crocodile crib area i got a new part-time employee helping me out and he made these dope tops we've got this perfect plastic coated wire so it's good for their faces if they jump up we got latches and locks for each one we're just gonna get this dog kennel going so it's got a nice barrier around it what do you think brother i think it's too legit and after i think we can go play with Camayo. it's hump day too it is hump day yes oh my god let's go play with Camayo. Yeah. Look at this. We got our little temporary crocodile crib ready to go. We got the FWC approved 11 and a half gauge, which you can actually use for adult crocodilians. But of course, this is just a baby area to keep people from getting too close to the tubs. Let's go see how Choby's doing. He's a big rescue gator. And this is a temporary enclosure that we built within like a week or two. If I didn't take him in, he was gonna be sent to a hunting ranch where people pay 15 to $20,000 to hunt a big old gator just like this. And if you see his belly, it's really, really big. He's eaten five chickens so far while he's been here. Yesterday, he ate three whole chickens. I mean, dude, that's great news. You know how much a big gator stresses when you move it. And look at this. After crunching down on some chicken, he actually lost one of his teeth. Check that out. So their teeth are caps. There's a new tooth right under it, ready to replace it. And they go throughout thousands of teeth in a lifetime, just like sharks. I'll keep the tooth. And if a fan wants, I'll give it to him on a tour. Don't forget, you can book a tour now on ChandlersWildlife.com. Been leaving Choby alone because I don't want to stress him out. I want him to start eating food. And now that he's starting to eat food, you can work with him a little bit. But if you see, I touch his tail just a little bit and he usually gets real crazy. How you doing, Bob? Look how big he is. Oh my goodness, he, he's huge, dude. Look how big his back is. Oh, he looks so good after eating some food. That's actually great because when I used to touch his tail, he would spin at me and start trying to bite me, bite the tarp. And just so you guys know, this is a temporary enclosure. We built all this just so we can get him into captivity and he didn't have to go to a hunting ranch where he'd get shot. Turn into boots, bags, and belts, and his head would become a trophy for a hunter. So as soon as we can, he's gonna get a big, nice, deep lake, just like the front lake. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna get all these crocodiles that were in the garage during the winter and put them outside, including Guapo, the Cuban crocodile, who has become very, very, lack of a better word, com Ooh, comfortable here at the CWW facility. All right, all right, can we do this without getting bit? Can we do this without getting bit? Wait. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, 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 oh if they're hot and they want to cool down, they turn neon yellow all over. So crocs can actually change color like chameleons. How cool is that? All right, let's go get him into his new tub. Woo, little guapo, ready to go back into his enclosure or his new enclosure. We're going to put him right here. Nice and easy. Oi, you, he almost got me. Nice and easy. Oi, he's a little cranky croc. And then we got latches and we got locks for these guys. So we're going to lock them all up when we're done. All right, you ready? <laughs> Ready. This is Layla, the American crocodile, and she's a little, ooh, she's a little snappy. She's a beast. This is actually Ziggy's younger sister. So now we have uh, three American crocodiles, two females and one male. We got Bobby right in there. Dude, American crocodiles are just so cool. Look at those freaking They are so beautiful. Let's get her in. I love them green eyeballs. There you go. Ah, oh, she didn't spit on you like the Cuban. That's good. I'll make sure that thing, that latch is on there. Make sure there's back ones on there too. Nice and good to go. All right, and my boy Bobby. Oi, Bobby. Oi, oi. Relax, nice and easy, nice and easy. Bobby, my only male American. Ooh, did you just poop? No, that was nothing. My only whoop, male American crocodile. And if you guys remember that episode of us catching that 13, 14 foot American croc bully at Gatorama, 
This is the son of Bully. Ooh, so he's gonna get really big. So hopefully he'll be a lucky boy in the future and have two girlfriends too. All right, nice and easy, Bobby. There you go. My boy, my boy. All right. We're gonna lock and secure everything. Gonna lock on this pen and all the tubs. Ooh, and it's hump day. Wednesday out here at CWW. Ooh, what do you think of my big baby, huh? What do you think, Tyler? He is so stinking cute. Look at that face. How do you not love that? I love my camera. Ooh. He's and adorable. we were we were busy, so when we came in here, he was like, "Let's play, let's play like a big puppy." And you know, when I'm busy, like on the computer, taking care of other animals here at the facility, because I do a lot of it myself. Good thing I'm a part-time employee now, but what I'm trying to get to is we're actually working on getting him a brother, because we're not gonna be breeding camels here. We're gonna work on getting him a brother, so he has a nice herd friend, a herd mate out here. And we're gonna be one big family. Big boy, and look at these feet. Look at those famous camel toes. Oh, look at the camel toes. So they don't have hoofs like a horse. They have squishy pads for the hot oh, desert yeah. sand. What? Does he have fingernails? He does. He has little nails. Can I play with your feet? Look at that. Beautiful little camel toes. Oh yeah, there's a little nail on there too. Look at that. Little nails. Maybe he gets a little fire once in a while. There's nice. What if I eat your toes? What if I eat your toes? I'm gonna eat your camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them, big eyes, big eyelashes to help us keep sand out of the eyes during sandstorms. See how loving he is? He is so I sweet. love him so much. He's a big puppy, watch. When we get up. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, get up. Come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's play. Come on, let's go. Woo. Woo. <laughs> He's like, I'm full. I got milk in me. Hump day. <laughs> Woo! Woo! He's like, let's play. I got three. Let's run. One, two, three. Go. <laughs> Whoa! Happy camel. Good boy. It's hard running in sand. It's real. I'm tired. It's tough. And uh, not just did I put sand in this enclosure because. That's what they have in the wild, but this is what prevents them from getting parasites. Because if they live in a tropical environment like Florida and they poop on the grass and they eat the grass, that's how they reintroduce parasites all the time. Did you expect for a camel to have its nipples around its genitalia? No, I did not. It's also very weird. They have nipples on both sides of their crotch. Just so you guys know. Interesting fact I learned about Kamea. Sorry, your dad is showing everybody your nipples. And their willies so small at first. They pee on their own legs. Just like his dad. Don't bite my nipples. For Halloween, he's gonna be a moose. Oh my god. With some antlers. That'd be so funny with some <laughs> antlers on him. And if you ever have a bad day, just come out here. Just Ooh. On this boy, right? Ooh. He's almost got the same hip as you. He does. Look at that little little, 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 little wig he's got on. There's this little top party in the back. And uh, I sleep sometimes in here. I sent you a video the other day. Freaking coyotes, dude. Like. 20 of them out in the farm fields going after baby cows. So I slept in here the other night. Here's a clip. Can you guys hear that? Coyotes. This is why I'm sleeping with Mayo tonight, keeping them company. All those. Oh, there's a lot out there. Keeping Kameo company. I want him to be nervous. He's in this enclosure by himself, so I wanted to sleep with him. Wow. You hear that? Ugh. Camille's comfortable though. He's chewing his cud, which is a sign of being relaxed. Chewing your cud means regurgitating from one of your three stomachs as a camel. If you're a camel, previously chewed food to re-chew it and enjoy the flavor. Helps with the digestion. Those coyotes are going crazy. They must be hunting cow calves out in the field. Good thing we went over six foot with the corral. It's okay, buddy. You trying to eat my shirt? That's not food. Those big, beautiful eyes. <laughs> it tickles. And did you notice he doesn't have a top row of teeth? He has a plate. Look at this. They have a plate, which is used to grind down cactus thorns. So they can eat a cactus with giant thorns and crush it against the plate take it down to their digestive tract. 
They got three stomachs. So he's got a big appetite like his daddy. All right, so we're gonna be taking care of the inland tie pan. Little Stevie just came out of shed. And Stevie's getting big, man. Stevie's actually eating a lot more. Use that hook to open up the cage. What's going on, Stevie? Stevie usually isn't too crazy, but you never know with the tie pans. They can be a little twitchy. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but, oh, there he goes. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but he's actually like beige right now. Look at that. He's actually lightening up in color. Woo, -hoo, woo, because he, ooh, he, because he's going into the summer phase, so he's gonna be turning beige with a full black head now. So he's actually lining up a whole bunch. He is not happy right now. He's got a little bit of an attitude. This weather has probably got him nice and toasty. Go nice and easy, Stevie. We don't want to get bit by him. Drop for drop, most venomous snake on the planet. Woo, Stevie, get in there. You nutty little snake. Look at him. Woo, woo. Tie pins. They are nutty, nutty little snakes. And hopefully in the future, we're going to be able to get coastal tie pans, the plain tie pans. And uh, I don't think the desert tie pins ever going to be available because that's straight up Australian. And they're not ever going to be in the American trade for zoos and whatnot. So I'll just have to enjoy the biggest one, the coastal type in, inland, and maybe plain in the future. All right, nice and clean enclosure. We can put little Stevie back. Easy Stevie. Easy Steve. And of course, we named him Stevie as a little nickname after the great legendary Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, because that's how we all learned about the inland taipan. He presented them to us when we were little kids. Stevie, get in there. Come on, Stevie. Did you just burp? Yep. It's okay. <laughs> Get it up. Hit it. There you go, Stevie. And secure this enclosure just like that. Secure. Now, we're going to be moving on to Big Bertha, the monocle cover that laid all those eggs. She actually shed her skin again. So that food we've been giving her to get her thickened up again after laying all those eggs is working pretty good. So let's take her out and give her a nice clean. All right, so let's take out Big Bertha, my original Cobra. That the first ever Cobra that I actually handled and produced by Tyler. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Tyler sold that Cobra to a friend of ours, a mutual friend, and that friend was nice enough to let me handle Big Bertha and get my first experience with a Cobra. And as you can see, She's still a little skinny, but she's definitely gained a lot more weight. Look at that. Whee! Look at that. Beautiful monocled cobra. First ever cobra I've had the privilege of handling. She is a good sized specimen, fully loaded with venom. The only reason I handle snakes like this is because I have a lot of experience and I understand how to read body language. So does Tyler. It's just, it's instinct when you work with them so, for so long. So do not mimic anything we do. You try to do that and you think you know what you're doing and then you got bit and you possibly could die. So you end don't up endanger like, yourself and others. End up like this. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> All right, we got a nice clean enclosure for Big Bertha, some fresh water. So let's put her back. What's up, mama? Don't be too upset. It's okay. Nice and easy. She's an older girl, so we'll be real gentle with her. Nice and easy. You know, she might not be the most spectacular looking snake with coloration, but she's the first ever cobra I've had an experience with, so she means a lot to me. Oi! So cool. Tyler's produced a lot of cool stuff over the years. I remember you told me that, didn't you produce an Indian cover that had like three yeah. O's on it on mm -hmm. the back? Yeah. So until we produce these Indian covers we got now. They, actually, I might need to clean them too. I think there was a shed in there. Yeah, I gotta clean these guys. Look Ooh, that. marshmallow, looking good. So pretty. Indian cobra. No, you know ya. And a collet snake. Look at this. Australian collet snake. Fiery red like lava. I love my snakes. All right. Lastly, for this episode, we're gonna clean the green mandies, eastern green mambas. These were gifts from Dingo Dinkleman over in Africa. And I think in the future we'll get some more mambas. Definitely working on getting a Tanzanian male for my big female over there. Even though I got Kobe the black mamba, he's South African. He's a clean gray. Whereas that beautiful mamba over there has white chevrons. I'd really like to be able to breed Tanzanian mambas. They're just so unique. So I'm actually gonna put the mambas in here because I know you guys haven't seen them in a while. I'd like to show them off for you. Real easy like, just gonna scoop them out. Do, 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 do. Please don't bite me if I'm not trying to die. Even though the green mamba is not as deadly as the black mamba, it's still a mamba and could kill you. So you gotta take them real serious. You just let me know if that mamba decides to shoot at, at me, I'll get in the other one. Gotcha. Whee! Crazy little snakes. And these ones are so cool because they have yellow scales oh, and they have. You're losing one. 
Oh, <laughs> they have yellow scales and they have a bluish hue to them too. So this, this locality is really cool. Yeah, it's okay. This is exactly what I wanted. There we go. <laughs> Get one mamba. Good thing is they're not too difficult to deal with. If these were black mambas, I would not be dealing with two at a time. But since the greens are way more laid back than mambas, I'm able to manipulate them and work with them without sweating too much. Nice and easy. Nice and easy, right into there. Almost there, come on. Look how slow and methodical they move. They don't move like real jet fast, like the, like the black mamas. They only do that if they're in the trees and whatnot. There we go. Check that out, green mambas, how cool. They are so pretty. What are you doing? Looking around? Well, this is about the safest way to observe a mamba in a tank. <laughs> so let's get these green meanies back in their enclosure. They're not mean at all. I always say that because it's fun to say green meanies, but they're actually really placid snakes compared to the black mambas. I mean, look at this. I would not be able to do this with black mambas. Handle two of them on a hook like that. There we go. Just a little twist of the hook. A little tickle of the tail. There we go. Close that up. Make sure it's nice and secure. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And lock and secure. You want to go see how, how Kevin's doing? Yes. You want to go see how Kevin's doing? Yes. You want to see how Kevin's doing? Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. I don't the person. Kevin's like, oh God. I feel the vibrations. I hear them. I hear them coming. So here's Kevin. Kevin's deep, deep in shed right now. Check him out. Here's his head. He's just chilling. Kevin is a 14, 15 foot long King Cobra. And he's deep, deep in shed. And he's not eating for me the last two months because mating season started in January. And not just do we have two female King Cobras in the snake house that you can smell the pheromones, but we also have Rusty, the up and coming male King Cobra. So that's making him not want to eat because he's thinking about mating right now. And also he's deep in shed. So we'll probably do a bathing episode. Maybe next episode we'll bathe him, put him in a big can of water to make sure he soaks. And uh, I guess that's it for this episode. Well, all right, my beautiful people. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. Go check out Tyler Nolan on his YouTube channel. Go check out thechillerswildlife.com so you can book a tour because you can come hang out with me. I here at the tour. You want to book a tour? Yeah. Did you know that we just had this new rig made where it's like a 12 foot long pole where you can feed the croc safely over the fence? Mm -hmm. You can actually oh. feed the crocodile oh. that bit my leg. So. Check us out on ChandlersWildlife.com. Book a tour, get a t-shirt, support the channel, support Tyler's channel. Follow your dreams, stay passionate about what you love, and never give up on it. We love you guys, and we'll see you on the next one. What if I eat your toes? I'm gonna eat your camel toe. <laughs>